and disparities in the country when it comes to black and white workers. A black worker in the region is nearly four times more likely to be unemployed than a white worker. In Minneapolis, the numbers are just as bad for Native American workers. At the same time, we are seeing development all over the city. There are hotels, housing space, office buildings, and sports stadiums being built, potentially providing thousands of jobs in construction and other industries. As a member of the City Council, what steps will you take and what active role will you play in ensuring that residents of Ward 5, in particular people of color, receive a maximum benefit from these projects? The first candidate to answer this question will be Blong Yang. You have two minutes. Minneapolis claims to be the most progressive city in the country, and yet we have these gaps, such as the unemployment gap, that is just completely unacceptable. And the thing is that, you know, we have these minority hiring goals that we put into legislation so that when we fund a Viking stadium, we'll hire minorities, supposedly. And these minorities are typically supposed to come out of North Minneapolis because that's going to make all the numbers look better. But the problem that I've always said about these minority hiring goals is that these are just pipe dreams, really, because at the end of the day, there's no funding for enforcement, and so contract compliance work doesn't work that well, that way, and we have all these controversies with how do we fund them so that we hire the right people, and at the end of the day, I mean, the hiring that happens, it doesn't really happen in Ward 5 or in places that are high minorities, and so I think that's a problem that we have here, and, you know, to me, anyways, I think the best solution to all of this outside of, you know, requiring that these things happen is to actually fund compliance. Get our civil rights department to be funded properly so that they can do the compliance work that's necessary so that these minority hiring goals actually happen, one. But two is, in terms of economic development, we have to think about this. You know, look at North Minneapolis, look at Ward 5. Target was here and Target failed. I mean, if we're going to wait for the big box stores to come and save us, we're kind of a way for a pipe dream to happen, and it's not going to happen. I think that what we really need to think about doing is encouraging people who live here to open up small businesses here and encouraging them to hire people from here. If we can develop this sort of self-sufficient model for businesses here in North Minneapolis, that's what's going to save us from this sort of unemployment that is just unacceptable. We just can't have that. Thank you. The next candidate will be Ian Alexander, you have two minutes. Thank you. You know, these are complex issues that are going to require complex solutions. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the saddest thing to me as a family law attorney is when someone comes, well, now I'm working out of my house, but when someone used to come to my office and they used to tell me about problems they have with making ends meet. And the disparities, when you research them, they're just, they're beyond trouble. I mean, it's just unacceptable for above 50% of African American males between the ages of 18 and 30 to be unemployed in any community, period. And so, for me, a, a, a big thing is looking at the problem from its source. And the biggest source, of, in my opinion, Education. That's a big issue. And you're going to ask yourself, well, the city council member doesn't deal with education. That's the school board's issue. That's the state's issue. Well, at the end of the day, yes, the city council member does deal with education because the city council member is responsible for making sure that his neighborhood is safe and is making sure that his neighborhood is has economic development going on in it so that people, the businesses will grow. Right now, I find, though, that the city government makes it exceptionally difficult for any entrepreneurs to start a business. It makes it very difficult when any business or any location is abandoned or empty. You have to bring the entire building up to code. There's all these things that can be done regulation-wise to make the process of entrepreneurial development on the north side thrive, and we're just not tackling those. And I believe I'm going to run out of time, but I will say that there are many things I'd like to do to work on that. And as your city, your next city council member, that would be my top priority. Thank you. Thank you. Next candidate. 
Thank you. And the next candidate to answer the question will be Kale Severson. You have two minutes. Well, first and foremost, we need to hold people like the Minnesota Vikings and the state of Minnesota accountable for community benefits agreements. We need to have something in place that's stating what our community needs. Um, but, you know, more importantly, the thing about my campaign and what Kale Severson wants to help represent our community is I'm going to put Fifth Ward residents above all. That means I am going to put the Fifth Ward before the unions. I'm going to put the Fifth Ward before any political parties. So that means I'm going to go in there and the unions aren't going to be happy with me, but I'm going to say, hey, the Fifth Ward 554, we need the jobs here. So we're going to have to make room for the folks that live here in the Fifth Ward. Uh, I, am, I am absolutely pro-union. I support them, but they have to understand that the folks in our ward need the jobs. Everybody would, would do better with, uh, with that happening. The other thing is, is um, I'd like to have some kind of residential requirement for people applying for jobs within the city of Minneapolis. And I'd like to include the, the park board and the school board in on this. That's thousands of jobs. Now, my family, my dad works for the city of Minneapolis, and they took our house where, where City View was, and we had to stay within the city of Minneapolis. And I, would, I thank Sharon Sells Belt and everybody else for making us stay in the city of Minneapolis because I wouldn't be who I am today. So I think 50% of the jobs through the city of Minneapolis, the Park Board, and School Board, ought to go to Minneapolis residents. But, let, but last, we as the North Side have something really important to do. We have to hold ourselves accountable. There are minorities that are getting jobs, though it's not a lot, and there are women that are getting jobs. When they get these jobs and they're here for a couple years, they feel it's not safe and the education isn't good and there's no one for them to shop on Broadway. Right. So then they go out to Brooklyn Park and make a world where it's at. Right. You see, so we, we, us, the people, are responsible for creating a better community to keep these people to stay here right on the north side. Thank you. And final um, person, Brett Buffman, you have two minutes. We have a major opportunity that's right before us. We have a crumbling infrastructure. Over a hundred years, we've been building on top and on top, and you see the roads. They're not doing well. And I'm surprised that we haven't had more damage to our cars and everything else. But that's a grand opportunity to supply a lot of jobs that the city council will be responsible for. And when we put in zip code hiring ordinances and, and start to think about how we're going to create an equitable solution to rebuild our community. Because when we start to get these young men and young women who are unemployed or underemployed, now all of a sudden they get to stabilize their home, get them into the jobs, we get to stabilize the homes. We get to stabilize the homes, they have more money to actually spend. Right now there's over $56 million worth of unmet retail opportunity. We have the money. We don't have the trust in ourselves. So now, even before we do all the ordinances and all the um, making sure that we have the, um, uh, the right regulations in place, we have to start to believe in ourselves on our side. So when we rebuild our roads and our streets and all the things that make up a city, because that's what we're responsible for in the city of Minneapolis, first and foremost, that starts to stabilize the community. Then you start to connect it. Once we have these grand avenues, now we can build up better facilities. We have to start anew. We have to start building the society for the next 100 years. We're going to redo our parks. We're going to redo our schools. We're going to do every little thing we possibly can get our hands on. And that's going to provide the economic engine to really take us into the 21st 